Welcome to Rugby I'm here on Free Sports, another week of fantastic Rugby League chat and it's the business end of the season. I'm joined with Jamie Jones Buchanan, my partner in crime and the one and only Lee Radford, the hardest man in Hull, without a doubt. <laughs> Radders, how are you? I'm good mate, I'm good. Business end of the season and neither me and Jones are involved in it. <laughs> nope. That's a, bad, uh, that's a bad start. Let me start where this weekend, fantastic. Featherstone go away to Toulouse yep. and when I'm in Ibiza, on uh, James Donaldson's stag that we found somewhere to watch it and none of us could believe it. No one expected Fed to A beat Lee, then beat um go to the play second. The beat to lose. To, no, 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 York, York and then the beat to lose. No one expected it and it what what fantastic, winning it from fifth potentially, Jones, you've had an experience of that. I've done it before, yeah, a lot of belief. Ryan Carr's doing a great job, isn't he? Yeah. And uh, just one more game. And not many had expected him to beat Toronto, but I don't think many expected him to beat London as well last year. So, yeah. uh, massive finish, great to watch. Um, Love Davis, young D, uh, little nuggety fella getting in John on, Davis, all, on yeah. all the kicks there. Outstanding. And to go over to Toulouse and all, we do try a week here and uh, they've put some great tries in this season, scored some absolute stormers, but just overawed by Featherstone, great performance. They've got some momentum on the road, I reckon, haven't they? I think they're going to have to do it tough this week. I believe they played, obviously, Sunday in, yep. in Toulouse, fly into Canada Monday, Tuesday, and then obviously play Saturday. So, do you know if they do it, the they did probably deserve it. Um, I think everybody's tipping Toronto to come to come up this time around. But if they if they get the job done, Featherstone, I don't think anybody will be grudging with that. How do you want in Super League? Toronto. I, I, <laughs> no, there's no disrespect to Featherstone. That little post office on the corner there. But it's um, yeah, no, I, I want to see Toronto. Why? Why is that? Give us some reason. Um, Financially, I think obviously the um, the they clubs don't, will they don't be take any more distribution. Exactly that. Yeah, I think the clubs will be. Um, praying they're coming up as well in, in Super League and I just think um, you know for life experience going to Toronto I know you've been out yeah, there and twice. swear by it so um, as, an, as a rugby player you want to experience playing around the world and, and that's obviously somewhere where I've never been before Is it a bit of a worry as well with Everston obviously relying so heavily on Rhinos when you look at that team there were probably five or six players coming from the Rhinos and is that how, how do well, they actually it, recruit it, for next year? Well, it'll affect Joel Ridge, won't it? Yeah, there might be some of those players that that, that stuck on and stay on, and uh, and and are playing Super League. They might be yeah. playing Super League regular this season, have they? So uh, they stick with it. Just in regards to Toronto, I'm all for expansion, and I think Toronto's great. I agree. But who with do you want, Toronto or Fev? Uh, probably because of the close relationships I've got with people at Fed, probably Featherstone. But I'm also been believe obviously Rome didn't fall or the Roman Empire didn't fall until Rome did. So as long as Rugby League is strong at its core areas, such yeah. as Featherstone and Keithley and Bradford and Leeds and all the rest of them, all to right across the M62, then sweet, let's go out and, and expand. Yeah. But not at the expense of the, the core Roman Empire at the, the epicentre. I like it, I like it. Well, we said before, it's the business end of the season. You're both not involved, but brothers, let's ask you because, you know, you, had, you were in the top five for the majority of the season and a couple of crucial defeats towards the end ended your campaign how do you look back and if you had to score your campaign out of ten what would you give yourself uh, five and a half to six I think, yeah, six. I think um, it was tough and t to start with because obviously we was on the back end of losing 11 straight games and then went on to win our, a lot lose our first two so to pick a group up on the back end of that was was difficult um, but then I think we showed in some performances what we was capable of doing and then in other performances, um, you know, really let ourselves down massively. So um, it's been a frustrating one. It's been a, you know, we've done our end of season reviews with the players and staff over the last fortnight and it's probably thrown up more questions than it has answers. Um, you know, so my job now as a head coach is to go away and, and try and find some answers. Um, to some of the stuff we've got to fix up. Uh, what's the biggest thing you've learned this year, Adders, and how will you, you know, impact that on, on the, the new recruits coming in? Um, I think team cohesion is a is a really big, you know, a really big part of, of any team's success. And I think towards the back end we we wasn't that we wasn't that tight knit that we have been in seasons gone by and I think you could see that on the field. Um, so getting that back together, obviously bringing ten new blokes and new faces in. Um, it's going to be difficult to get everybody settled down nice and early, but you know that's all, all exciting as well. It's 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 a bit that classroom scenario at school. You know, you get the 
the cool kids sort of find their way to the back of the class, all the nerds go and sit out the front and then you get a lot of followers sort of in the middle and, and hopefully, you know, them cool kids out the back are, are good people and good professionals because that can have a real big influence on, on the rest of the class. I've been watching a lot of NRL this year with obviously quite a few of the lads going over there to play. I've been really impressed with Canberra obviously making the grand final. Who do you think is going to win that out of interest? I think Roosters where I love Canberra to win. Yeah, yeah, my head says Roosters, but my heart says Canberra. Yeah, I'd, lo I'd love to see for Batty and uh, for Smell to pick up a, a grand final uh, ring. I think uh, Ricky Stewart's boy, he's done, a, he's done a great job there as well. And George Williams going next year, it's quite interesting as well. It is. I think it's, it's a worry as well, obviously. the. The better they do, the more they're probably going to come and pick. Um, so that's you know that that's scary. I don't, I don't think there's an outside back that's quite gone over and cracked it yet. Yeah. So I think our outside backs are safe for the time being. But I think if if George goes over and and does something, then um, yeah, there could be one or two more going as well. I, I want Canberra to win because I, I, the thought of the World Club challenge. I wanted to ask you about. Uh, Saints on this because Adam Swiss, one of your recruits for next season, um, and some of those boys after the game on the weekend against Wigan obviously clapped the fans for the last time. And there was a real jovial atmosphere. I think there was, we did a, a lunch midweek uh, yeah. with Jason Robinson, and a, a lot of the, there was a couple of Saints fans there, and a lot of them were worried that they were going to have this Udo over them coming out of the semi final and, and crumble again, but they fired themselves out of uh, an atomic gun. That performance was yeah. as good as first half as I've ever seen. And one of the Saints fans, an old fella, come running over at me after, he like, let a beeline for me. Because I was there, and he went, we're the best team in Super League. <laughs> and I, I, I'm like this, and I'm like, yeah, I, I go with that, mate. I go with that. <laughs> Luke Thompson, unbelievable. And if he doesn't get an international starting team at the end of the year, there's something wrong. When he come off the pitch, yeah. it was like a slow Mexican wave that <laughs> just followed him in a standing evasion. He was outstanding. But, Saints deserved the medal, but there's no medals for winning semi-finals. And it actually took me back to 2008 when uh, Saints beat my team 38-10, just two points difference at Knowlesley Road, absolutely paggered us. We were dropped down to second semi and then two weeks later we went and won the grand final. So as, from a coaching point of view, Justin Albert's looking at that 10 out of 10 performance, 9.8 out of 10. What does he need to do to get his boys up to that level again because we're going to need it in a grand final in, in two weeks time yes yeah, it's, it's a tough one I've, I've never been there as a coach so <laughs> i've been there as a player obviously I, I think the cup's probably the biggest advertisement for yeah. you know you can be great all year but you've got to get it right on the day and i think you know pressure's a, a funny thing and does funny things to people on a rugby league field in, in particular so you know making sure they don't play the occasions a big happened with yourselves and cass you know yeah. cass was I think it was it was 18 or 17 or 18. Yeah. They were red hot, and yeah. you know you couldn't get a glove on them all all year. And some of the some of the football that was playing, you just had to tip your hat to them. But didn't play the conditions. Uh, uh, you know they had some some things go on obviously the week before, but didn't play the condition the conditions particularly well. And the rest is history, I suppose. Look, let's go back. We need to speak about the players you've signed, and uh, we, I'd I'd seen a lot of these players in the NRL watching the guys. And uh, Manu Mao, <clears throat> he's up for a Dalian. Um And you've got some other guys. Do you want to give us a list of some of those guys you've signed? <clears throat> yeah. Um, have you got a list? Is that, is that no, no, any of them? <laughs> yeah, no, look, we've brought, obviously, Mahe back. Yeah, um, Mahe Fanua. Mahe Fanua, who, 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 you know... It's like his son, his second son. Yeah, so he keeps telling me. He's asking for pocket money, so... <laughs> um, you know, was outstanding first yeah. time round. and yeah, was, yeah. A, was a bit of a left fielder when he first came. I think he's coming back a, a more established player now and, and hopefully a couple of years older between the years as well. Yeah. Um, so some seniority there. Um, Liggy Sow is one I'm you know, really looking forward to seeing. Tell us about him. Yeah, supposed to be a, an Andy Bloke by all accounts. Tough guy. Yeah, yeah, can look after himself. Um, love the way he plays. Um, for a poly, he's, he's as fit as they come as well by all accounts. So and has, has got some, some ad-lib footy in his game. So I really like, you know, what he's about. Chris Satte came over this year. Um, and he's I think block, he's a big human being and, and he, his performances um, one after the other towards the back end of last year has left me really excited. He's, um, he can carry the football, there's no doubt about that. Um, Swifty, I think, would get in 90% of the Super League teams in the competition. Um, it's just unfortunate he's got you know, probably what the world's best winger on the right edge and, and Regan Grace has killed it with some of the stuff he's yeah. done this year. Um, but by all accounts, he's a, 
He's a social chameleon and really a very, big around. Very good bloke. Yeah, around obviously. the changing rooms, from what I've heard. So I'm looking forward to obviously him integrating within the squad. And I think Jonesy's not not the Jonesy, but the other Jonesy. <laughs> Josh Jones has but, been the best part of in the comp yeah, yeah, this yeah. year. You know, and that's that. Obviously, I've got my bias dead on at the moment, but um, whenever we've played him, he's been a he's been a real handful. So, you know, hopefully, all of them will come and and you know add to what we've got. If they're all fit, if you can keep them all fit next year, would you expect to be looking at a grand final? Because you've got such a good squad. Yeah, I think, look, top five is always your ambition. Because yeah. getting that top five, you've got a chance. And I think Salford are evident of that. Anything can happen if you if you get in there. You get a, you get some momentum and some wind in your sails when you're in that five. You know, you're capable of doing anything and they're 80 minutes away from going to a GF. You know, what, what nobody would have tipped them to do at the beginning of the year. So. Top five is obviously what you're striving for, and, and the cup is, is ultimately five games. You know, you win five games, you you manage to get a bit of bling round your neck. So, um, yeah, we've got we've got a good squad. There's an awful lot of stuff to build around that good squad, um, but there's some talent there. You're not the only team who've signed big for next year. George Burgess at Wigan, Gareth Widdup, uh, Warren and Jackson Hastings at Wigan, Catalans, Jim Maloney. Do you think it's going to be the best Super League ever in 2020? I don't know, I think this one's been good. Yeah. I think yeah. this one's been, you know, if you can't, if as a sport we can't sell um, sponsorship on the back end of this year, you know, the Saints have ran away with it. Beyond them, it's been really interesting how it's panned out. And I think the relegation battle has, you know, has been great the last, the last three or four weeks. You know, the fact that everybody's beating everybody, you know, I'm bottom of my tipping comp at the club. I hear um, No, I'm third from bottom, but um, <laughs> either I'm a bad gambler or, or it's a pretty close competition, one of the two. Um, yeah, I think, I think for excitement factor, it's been a, it's been a really good campaign, and I think you know if next year is of the same milk, then even better. It's going to be interesting with Manu Mal because obviously he's such a big name. But you've you've got a quick word on the two lads who have gone see Manu and Matt Minichello, the kind of people they've been for you at your club. Yeah, you know both outstanding blokes. Manu Manu's nickname in the New Zealand camp was Seeks. Yeah. So by all accounts, is his is his personality double and how he conducts himself so if that's the case you know I'll be over the moon I listened to one of Brad Arthur's interviews last year um, and he had to pick you know they've got that dreaded question pick your favourite player and um, you know he said the one he really loves coaching is Manu um, so straight away you know me is pricked up with that so I'm looking forward to getting him through the door but he's replacing two fantastic you know blokes first and foremost and two you know, really, really good players as well in, in many and seeks. And Gazelle's going around again, the big fella. The big the fella. Adult. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, <laughs> he's, he's like that. Yeah, End yeah. of every year, please, yeah. guys. He his, please. <laughs> he got, to be fair, it didn't take much selling. He, he had 12 months behind the desk and realised <laughs> yeah. playing was the ultimate. You know, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. He'll come, I promise you. Um, <laughs> he re, you know, as a football manager, he had to deal with the personalities and, of, the, of the team and realised that was a you know what a difficult job that was as well so playing um is the easiest of the three i think absolutely outstanding now it's time to go and break a world record go over well, to cookridge golf club we'll have a dig and we'll have a dig uh, tell us about this world record jones yeah it's, uh, it's so richie mother's volunteered to go try and break a world record and it's a bit of a copy from uh, jimmy redknapp uh trying to knock some balls up for um andrew flintoff Freddie flintoff and, and the idea is to catch as many golf balls as you can in a minute, uh, which is a lot harder than it looks, as you'll see uh, from this footage. But if we can get involved in breaking records, well, that's outstanding. And we're helping a really good cause in uh, a great charity golf day as well. Let's check it out over at Cookridge with Richie Mathers. <laughs> In 2015, unfortunately, I lost my daughter to cancer, and ever since that, I've tried to put some up back and give them something. We usually raise around £10,000 every year, and this is the fourth time we've done it. So, hopefully, we'll keep going, we'll keep trying silly world records attempts and just keep having a game of golf and a few beers after. The record attempt today 
pitch a ball 100 yards and somebody had to catch it and the world record at the moment is 12 in one minute. Today Richie Mavers has very kindly come down and he's going to attempt to catch the ball so hopefully we should have a bit of fun today. To be fair I left home this morning I thought I'm going to break a world record but I've just had 10 minutes practice and it's, it's much tougher than than I anticipated, but um, they come down, you know, you hit a wedge and you think it's coming down soft, but they're coming down 100 mile an hour, so I'm just going uh, to give them the best shot and uh, see how many I can get 12 to beat in a minute. It's a tall order, but uh, hopefully we can get it done. The competitive side uh, of me has kicked in. I've done sort of the, uh, the usual old pre match routine a bowl of porridge, can of Red Bull, and a uh, couple of Pro Pros, so I'm, uh, I'm excited by it. Having practice, so it's tough, but uh, if I can pull it off, it'll be a, be a great thing. Go! Ready? Ready? Go, 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 hit it. Oh! That's Where is it? Go again, go again, go again. Can't see it. Go. Go. Lost it. Where? Go. Can't see it. I've got it, I've got it. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Go. Oh! Get ready. What? Oh! oh. 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 I can't see it. Get out. Get out. Oh. Oh. Get out. 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 One job. Now. Oh. oh my god. Don't film that. These big hard rugby players, eh? Did you hear that one in my thumb? So was that our effort, the world record? Oh my god. I'll have another go. I'll have one more go. Graham! One more go, one more! We'll be here all day. Get, he just wants one for the camera, doesn't he, bless him? Three, two, one, go! Go! Oh, you go, go. Sorry. Go. Shot two now. Hall of Fame. Oh, three he's dropped in a row now. See what I'm working with. Right, he's got to catch that. Right, are you having a laugh? No! Service is better than Pablo Hernandez. Got it, got it. Oh. Did you get it? I don't know. There were no cheer. Oh. Oh. That's it! Okay, stop. <laughs> I don't want to f <laughs> that. He had five straight in him. <laughs> Nearly. Nearly. Before I dropped cold. Give him a of whiskey. <laughs> Drop four cold. There's they bounced out. Yeah, we uh, we had we had the attempt, uh, failed miserably. I couldn't catch it. The best of times when I played rugby, never mind from 100 yards. But how did you? Great. To be fair, you don't realise. From us, it looks like it's perfect. Yeah, it's easy, soft, and then you can hear like, the ball in his hand. And yeah, and I, I'm glad I was on that end, not the other end. To be fair, it was putting him on a on a uh, on a penny, but and I, I had I dropped I dropped a few, but they were coming in so fast that you know it's it's uh, it's tough. You know, Andrew Flintoff I think caught 12 in a minute. Um, crazy that. Crazy. Really. Jonesy, what a terrible effort. Yeah. What a terrible effort. Yeah. What a catch one. That morning, believing he's going to break a world record. 
We'll try again, Richie, next year. It's, uh, it's a yearly event, but I imagine somebody like Freddie Flintoff, who's had years and years of catching a rock hard cocky ball, has probably got hands like leather and used to that, that sort of experience. But um, I thought, being a fullback, the ability to catch a high ball might be transferable skill, but obviously not quite yet, that, mate, but we'll, we'll try again next year. Uh, big game this week, semi final. Ian Watson's been superb all year. Um, who's going to win? Um, I think Wigan, but yeah. I think it'll be close, yeah. Do you want I'd, Salford, though? I'd love Salford to win, I would, yeah. I don't know whether Super League would, obviously, because of the support, but yeah. I think, um, you know, I think it'd be a, it'd be a Leicester City story, wouldn't it? I think it'd be a, a great experience. You know, they've obviously batted against the odds all year, you know, in what they've had in terms of squad size, facilities and, you know, support, I suppose, etc. But they've, you know, they are that, they are this year's Wakefield, you know, they've yeah. had that year that when a lot of your group get get wind in the sails and momentum, it, you know, it can be a good thing. I'll, I'll do Wigan deal with that defeat because it wasn't like Wigan were horrendous or lethargic. Saints were just that good. They got off the floor quicker, they run a lot harder and at times they look like a million miles apart. What, what do they do this week? I think sometimes it can be a kick up the, the backside. Um, you know, they, they've got to use it as a motivation. Um, and like I said, you know, it's a different, it's a different environment once you get to Old Trafford. It's a different game. It's it's, it's a lot wetter. Yeah. You know, the field's a lot squarer. Um, so yeah, they've got to use it to their advantage. Um, but they're playing against a, like I said, a, a team that from one to seventeen are probably all playing eight and nine out of ten at the minute. Yeah. Um, you know, some players that you looked at earlier on in the year and weren't really, you know, anywhere near the top of the game are, are bang at it. I've got to ask you, Jonesy, when you're playing at Old Trafford. Uh, is it difficult because the in goal seems so small? Does that, make, does that make sense? Yeah. Don't really care. Like I said, it's very rare for myself in in goals anyway, <laughs> bit, unless we're dropping the ball out. Um, but no, it's a, it's great. And there's always somebody fires down that little slope and into the boards. <laughs> but we're scoring a try when it happens, so nobody really cares. Um, it's just great. And it's a smash and grab experience for me. Wembley is quite a big, yeah. long drawn out build up. You go down that week and there's all kinds of events going on and meals and all that. Whereas you don't even know it at Old Trafford until the week before sometimes. Yeah. Um, and you just go there, get the press stuff done one Monday and then go in and you're literally not allowed on the pitch for any longer than 80 minutes, mate, because they want you off it as soon as you're done. Um, so it's in and out and end of season, which is always a big thing for me. When we finally won the Challenge Cup in 14, it was a new experience winning a, a cup in season. You know, not having to been able to put your tools down yeah, at yeah. the grand final, you put your tools down, and uh, nobody can prove you wrong or or change that until at least February the year after. Jackson Hastings looks odds on to win uh, Man of Steel this yeah. year. <clears throat> what a phenomenal influence he's been on Salford this year. Mate, he's been great, but I think Rad has already mentioned it. Some of the players around him that go under the radar. But I, has I he think, bought them up? Jo think? George Griffin, Josh Jones, uh, Nile Levels. Um, and Lola here in the last few games, they've all had a real synergy. Throw Wellham in there, Wellham, you know, yeah, you yeah. Like Wellham earlier on in the year, and and this is no disrespect. He, he, you know, he looked steady away, and he's, you know, he, he's, he's found a bit at the minute that he's making other players look good around him, and I think that's a that's a one to seventeen for them fellas. Well, this season we've got some, we've run some fantastic competitions all year, and I think we've saved the best to last with. Uh, big thanks to our partners, Bachelors, who've been fantastic with us all year, Jonesy. We've had some real fun taking players here. There, everywhere. Luke Gale on the P machine has got to be right up there. It's been good fun, hasn't it? It's been awesome, mate. It's been good. good. Well, we appreciate the support. We've been running uh, the competition with Bachelors for two VIP spots at the grand final. The winner for that prize is Craig Barnes, and that's a Saints fan. We'll be seeing his team play either Wigan or Salford on October 12th. If you've not got your tickets yet for the grand final, get yourself to rubbm.co.uk. <clears throat> you can come with us in our lounge. We've got our own lounge this year. Uh, we've got loads of fans joining us. It's going to be fantastic. About 180 tickets, I think we've got in there. Plenty have already gone, but get yourself on rubbm.co.uk and you've got your own bar with us guys entertaining you. It's going to be great. You excited, Jonesy? I am, mate. It's grand final time. Grand final time. You're not going to be on the pitch, but you're going to enjoy it anyway. I certainly am. I love it. I love it. You always find somebody there as well, don't we? <laughs> yes, yes. Um, some of the celebrities that, that turn up that you think would never, um, never go along. It's, good. it's a great event. I love it. Yeah, we can't wait. We'll see you at the grand final. We'll see you right here on Free Sports for part two after the break. Keep your hit locks, keep it real bare.
Welcome back to Ubem here, part two on Free Sports. Still joined by Jamie Jones Buchanan, our special guest today, Lee Radford. Rad, it's, it's, there's big transfer news going on at the moment. Uh, we've talked about someone, but today Luke Gale signing for Leeds. Um, what do you make of that as a signing? Because apparently the rumour mill is it, Danny Richardson going to, to Castleford to cover Luke Gale and Luke and, and Castleford is still going to be up financially from the deal, the merry-go-round of the deal. Yeah, I think that's that's been on the go for a couple of months now, hasn't it? I think yeah. the, the, on the gossip grapevine. Um, yeah, if it obviously an outstanding player, I think, you know, and a senior bloke as well, that'll be good for the changing rooms. Um, and Richardson, um, you know, along with Truman, two really tidy young halves there, so... I think it makes sense for them all. I, th I think probably Richardson's probably too good of a player, you know, not to be not to be starting at a club somewhere. Um, you know, I hope it works out for all none of them. <laughs> 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 but no, it's uh, you know it is. It's uh, if like you say, if Gale is fit and back, you know, playing how he was playing, yeah. obviously prior to his injuries, um, he'll be he'll do a job for Leeds and 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 you know Richardson right age. Sort of right temperament. It'll be good for Paulie to coach him as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seems to get the best out of them young boys. Yeah, yeah, and and the the ground itself, you know, the way he kicks as well will, I think, suit him massively as well. Watch that space, those two. Jones, Rich Ager also announcing that Trent Merrin speaking to Australian clubs and Trent went on online yesterday uh, on social media uh, announcing he having a baby. Obviously, his missus went through some personal turmoil last year that, you know, the reasons why she might be homesick or maybe want to go back to Australia, but massive loss after the season. It is a big loss because he's played really well and he's as honest a bloke as I've ever met and not just honest off the pitch, honest on it as well. Yeah. And you know, when you went, want somebody who's tough, defends well in the middle, Gets to where he needs to be. He's right up there, and, and that's why you know he was like an interim captain yeah. uh, for most part of the season. He's had some really difficult things to put up with off the pitch, yeah. but it's not affected his output on the pitch or at training at all. So I've got the utmost respect for uh, Chen Marine and wish him obviously all the best. I'd like him to come back and see yeah. how he's yeah, staying, yeah, yeah. but if if that's not the case, then fair enough. In terms of Luke Gale. It's a really interesting story holistically when you look at it because if you came through the system, the academy at Leeds, you get a little star on your shirt, all right? Yeah. And Luke Gale will get a star because he came through our system, a lot yeah. of people forget. And he went away because he had the likes of Kevin, Rob Burrow and Magsy. And it's interesting, last week we had our academy presentation night and we had to say bye to a few academy lads who were leaving. Yeah. Certainly not the case that it's the end of any journey, as some of them can perceive. And I think Luke Gale is a wonderful example of an hometown lad who comes back to his club and has reached world-class heights on his own merit. Uh, so great to have him back as well. It'll, it'll be a big addition to the culture next year. Right, it's time to go over now to we uh, Wheatwood Hall as uh, Luke Gale does his medical. From an outsider looking in, obviously, a medical, how important that is. I think it's, it is a big one to get somebody who's maybe had, got, had an history of injuries, you know, I've, and I've been there myself, to make sure that they're fit, because it's a big investment in it. We would come close to, to signing Terry Campisi at Hull. He we obviously ended up, KR. yeah, no, before he went to Hull KR. Oh, right. And we was, um, we was actually, obviously, because he'd had a, an injury play career, so we was going to send our, you know, we was booking flights for our physio to go out there and, you know, run down our own medical. We'd obviously touch base with some um, some doctors over in Australia as well that we trusted and it, it never came to fruition, but it was it was pretty close. So, yeah, you'd like, you'd like to think a club like Leeds would cross all the I's and dot all the T's, I think. Let's check it out right now, uh, Wheatwood Hall, Luke Gale on his Leeds Rhinos Medical. physical side of it mate yeah. so if you can pop your top off for me uh, have a stand up facing that way if you can pop your shoes off as well please yeah. um, no issues with your neck historically yeah. anything like that just go chin to chest for me spot on up to the ceiling good man have a look left for me 
and have a look right. All good? All good, yeah. Left ear to left shoulder. What? Left ear to left shoulder. <laughs> That's the one. And then right ear to right shoulder. Good, no pinch, no restriction, anything like that. Spot on, mate. Push up to me, hold that. Relax there for me. Push forward as hard as you can for me. And relax, push back to me. Good. Have a stand up for me, mate. So we'll go shoulders, so facing that way for me. Just go both, uh, fingertip, uh, thumbs forward, up above your uh, head for me, all the way up. And back down. No ACs or anything like that before. No. Who do you have doing all your tackling for you? <laughs> I can say I don't do much of it. <laughs> don't let me pick this up, mate. Good, relax there for me. All good? Yeah. Pull into here for me. Good, relax there for me. And pull into here. Good. So just have a, have a sit on the edge for me. Nothing before, no. I did break that as a kid, but... Radius, or scaphoid. 13 years old, uh, can't really remember. Mm -hmm. I had a pin in it, but it's never bothered me. Yep. No pin in there? No. See where I pin that? Yeah. Feel it? Mm. Passed out when she took the pin out. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I remember my mum taking me. I was only like, I broke it rollerblading. Yeah. Um, and literally took the pot off, and they were like, it was like a hook pin. Yeah. And players were on the side, I was thinking, she's never doing it with that. Yeah. She just literally ragged it out. I was on a bed like this, I just passed out. <laughs> so we'll just do lower back, mate. So if you can touch your toes, please. All good? Sorry. Have a lean back as far as you can. All good? Yeah. So I'm just going straight leg raise, mate. Just tell me when it comes on. Yeah, yeah? yeah? Just behind the knee? Yeah. Yeah. Bit earlier on this one. Bit earlier. No history of lower back stuff or anything no, like that. No, no, nothing. No, come on. So just up to me, mate. We we'll just check strength around here. All good? Yeah. Kick up to me. Yeah. No issues, groins or anything like that before? No, nothing, no. Good. Not fast enough to pull it down there. No groin. All good? Yeah. Any pinch? No. No. Do you get a pull through here? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Just a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, it's sound. No pinch? No. Good. Just a normal stretcher. Yeah. All good? Yeah. Just a natural stretcher. Yeah. Feel like you've got a bit more this side. Yeah, I feel like... I don't know if we work it that... We've, we've been working that hard or... We've... You've been doing loads of hip stuff? Yeah, yeah, loads of glute, yeah. hip. So, I reckon... be interesting to see, like, with hamstring strength and stuff like that. Yeah. It, feel, it doesn't feel stronger, but it gets... It can go for longer than before. Yeah. Know what I mean? Yeah. All good yeah. on that. As I take you round. Good. All good. Yeah. Nothing. No. Nothing. No. Good man. Right. So a knee, ankle, and I'm gonna have a look at a couple of other bits, mate. So if you can have a lie back for me. If I do that. Yeah. All good. Yeah. Squeeze your quads up for me, mate. Good. And relax then again. Now relax. Yeah. No issues with this yeah. knee before, is there? No. All good? Yeah. Good man. And bend her up for me. All good? Yeah. As far as you can for me. And relax. Sweet. All good? Yeah. Good. Nothing as I go down? No. Good. You've probably got better extension on your left than your right as well. On the, um, on what do you mean? On your, your knee extension. Oh, yeah. So like if you squeeze up, squeeze, yeah. so go straight for me, squeeze your quads up. So squeeze, squash oh, my hand, yeah. yeah. So keep your, keep your leg down like, and do that side. You see how much further you get your heel yeah, off? Yeah. So that's good that. Do you reckon because it uh, would be smashing it? For that yeah, long? it will be mate, yeah. But it's good, you, like some people struggle to get that back, yeah, but it's yeah, great yeah. that you've got that. Point down for me mate, as far as you right can. Down. Yeah. All good? Yeah, Don't down. pinch or anything? No, no. Good. Pull up for me. Turn them both in, turn them out. 
All good? Yeah, sound. Good. Right, mate. So we'll do um, Achilles stuff first. Yeah. Take some measurements. Yeah, is it comfortable? Yeah, so that's yeah. about you, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So that one. Good. And again. Good. Sound. This one more can be getting smashed. Yeah. Good work, mate. Good. Have you measured that before? No, what, what are so we? That's so your 12 on your right, yeah. 11 on your left, which is good, mate. I squatted last week 100 kilo, three sets of six. That's the most I've done. Is it? Yeah, since. Um, is that a lot for you? or? Uh, I, I, my max would only be like 120. <coughs> yeah. As you can tell, I'm not, <laughs> um, I'm not built to squat. Yep. Good. Better, mate. <laughs> a lot better. <laughs> just jump on the bed for me. We're yeah. just going to a couple of tests. Yeah. All good? Yeah. This and is there for me. It's for, so, you know that standing exercise you've been doing? Yeah. So it's called posterior knee stability. Yeah. And it's about calf, ammy, glute, and All quad working, working together. together. Yeah, yeah. It's testing that, basically. Yeah. Uh, just bring this back a touch. Yeah. Can you lift your heel off? Yeah. And then don't let me pick you up. Good. Not cramping all yeah. like that. Good. So just facing me, you're just going to go three single leg squats on your right, three single leg squats on your left. So you, uh, bump to the chair and back up for me. Good, mate. Good. There you go, yeah. mate. Yeah. Good. Good, Let's prepare as if we are. So go through your like knee to wall type yeah. uh, movements. And go single legs, mate, as well. And so I it's nothing. Like, I spoke to Matty about it. He said it's nothing you haven't done. No, I've done no. So you know when when it's yeah. tested. Yeah. <laughs> Along the line, mate, just go heel to toe. So, heel onto toe, heel onto toe, heel onto toe. I'll just find a rhythm. And then same thing back, mate. Good. And then we'll go heel to toe with an A stance, with just a one second pause at the top. Lock your hips out at the top, mate. Are you doing any doubles? So one, two, one, two, one, two, no, one, two. Dancing, good. Keep your feet underneath you as well. So don't kick, don't kick out as much. Yeah. Sit. So don't kick out. It's not a karaoke. <laughs> good, mate. Do you want to just do some dropping off? So, you don't mind, can we go on to that? No, so we're just going on to doubles, so just down into double first, good. So let's just do two dropping off onto your left and sticking, yeah. Good, mate. Good. Good, mate. Good, mate. Best one, that. This contraption next. So you just strapped in and push as hard as you can. Push down as hard as you can and then pull down, pull up as hard as you can. Nice, mate. Let's go. As you can here, mate. Push, push, push. Pull. Come on, mate. As you can. And again. And pull. Go, mate. Yeah. 
Nice, mate. So your max ones now. Hard as you can. Come on. Let's go, mate. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Spot on, pal. Six. He's on track for six as well. Nice, mate. Let's go. Nice, mate. Come on, then. Just looking at it, it's, you're ready for that heavier stuff, aren't you? Yeah, definitely. Because when it got lighter, it was yeah, sweet. Yeah, yeah. Let's go, then, mate. Max, come on. Let's go, mate. Nice, mate. So it's, did you have some scans today? Portrait sound scans? After. Got it. Uh, got it, yeah, probably. Um, so you want him to take a picture of his gas rock if he can, muscle yeah, fibre? Yeah. yeah, sweet. If he can. Just long, a longitudinal view of yeah. the gas rock will be perfect. Sound? Um, High tech, that. I like <laughs> it. I like it. Yeah. If, if it's going to be too much, just let us know. Then yeah, no, yeah, we'll sort it. We'll sort it. It's all good. Spot on. Um, awesome. When will you have a chance to get it? I'll send it over today. Yeah. Straight away. Um, yeah. And the jumps. Are you sure? Spot on. Thanks, mate. No appreciate worries. that. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. So basically, mate, the first bit... Um, Ed test. ...is just a questionnaire. Um, concussions. I got your last one in 2017. I'm not sure which one. Yeah, I'll just, I just have one. Cool. Sleep. How many hours sleep do you get? Um, I've got two kids, my one, so not not all right. Well, no, I'd say anywhere from six to eight. Six would be the least. Eight. I'd say probably eight hours. Right. So we'll go through the um, just some of the general medical exam. You had appendicitis, didn't you, in 2017? Yeah. No problem since then. No. Mate, you're alright taking that off and I'll yeah, listen yeah. to your chest. Right, I'm just gonna check your pulse. Deep breath in and hold it. And breathe out. If you get basically you've been through it before, yeah. are you get any symptoms. I'll run out, I'll run out I'll run a list, just tell me if any are positive. So headache. No. Pressure in the head, no. neck pain, no. feeling sick, no. dizzy, no. blurred vision, no. balance problems, no. sensitive to light or noise, no. feeling slowed down, no. feeling like you're in a fog, no. don't feel right, no. difficult concentrating, no. remembering, no. low energy, no. confused, no. drowsy, no. more emotional, no. irritable, no. sad, no. nervous, no. or anxious. No. Go ahead. So your favourite bit. So. Are these who remember in? Yeah. Can we turn the cameras off? Of <laughs> <laughs> it's terrible. This is the best bit. <laughs> I, I have no concussion, I'm all right now. <laughs> so, give you some, I'll give you some ones. Five words. So, yeah. candle, paper, mm -hmm. sugar, sandwich, wagon. Yeah. So, just repeat them back. Candle, paper, sugar, sandwich, wagon. Yep, yeah. and again. Sugar, paper, can, oh, candle, sugar, paper, sandwich, wagon. Yep, and one more time. Sugar, paper, sandwich, wagon, candle. Keep Spot on. Candle. If you get your finger, yep. touch your nose, yep. touch my finger, yep. quick as you can. Back and forth, that's it, keep going. Yep, good, what you need to do, put one hand out and just clap your hands and then just flip it both sides, quick as you can. Yep. That's fine, spot on. Right, so if we used this as a line, yeah? One, two, just to one foot in front of the other. That's, that might put you off balance. Yep, so just walk towards me. Yep, spot on. Okay, and just take a step forward. What you need to do is to go onto your left foot, just bring your knee up. Hands on your hips. <laughs> Perfect. You can hold that for 20 seconds. You pass everything. Are you actually going to do it that way? <laughs> Hands on your hips and then close your eyes.
Good. Those five words. Can oh. you remember them? Right. Candle, sugar, paper, sandwich. Oh, what's that? Wagon. Wagon? No. Yeah, wagon. Yeah. Is that oh, right? Yeah. Smashed it. Right, so the last thing to do is have a look at your uh, Achilles. So if you just have a lie down on your, on your front, yeah. with your legs just hang uh, off the edge of the bed. You are having more hopes with him in the Who's that? I feel it coming away. I suppose it's just going through the front call, yeah. I think, I think it's big room. Right, mate. That's done. Sound nice. Yeah. On. Cheers. All right, mate. Thank you. All good, mate. All yeah. looks fine, man. Yeah, sound. Yeah, yeah. Just what it normally looks like. It all looks exactly like an expected look. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Perfect. It's uh, not that worries, you know? No, no. no all looks good. Yeah. No, all looks sweet. Jonesy, that's quite in depth there from, from uh, the conditioner. It's, it's got to be on it. Rob has mentioned you. that you've, you've got to do your due diligence um, when somebody's had a knock. He's a big player. You know, we know how much Cass missed him, obviously, this year and, and, and in previous years when he's. Uh, not being fit, so you want to make sure he's right. And he's right, and he's good, he's ready to go. I'm really excited. He's a good friend of the show, a good friend of ours, and uh, great to have him back at Leeds. Right, a couple of fans' questions to finish off. Um, Matt Jacks, would you get in the boxing room with Paul Sculthorpe again? Um, I've just had, we just had this conversation, I've just had my teeth done. Um, <laughs> so unless I've got... Great yeah, thank well. you, yeah, thank you. Um, Unless I got a really good gum shield, no. <laughs> uh, you left this question with me, haven't you? Uh, Dowdy, 1979, asks, what's been your biggest mistake as a coach? Big, biggest lesson you've learnt? Um, God, I've made too many to, too many to go into. There, there ain't one, but I've, I've made a lot. I've got a question. What's the best player you've ever signed? They had this poll in the Old Daily Mail this week. Um, I think Mark Sneed got the vote. But what for you, from your opposite, for you, for you, you personally? Um, what about now, I got the, 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 I mean, just completely like, out of the box, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, How did it come about, that signing? Um, it was a sign from, from God, I think. Yeah. It was, um, yeah, no, I watched, I, I'd read um, Seven's Heaven, the, the um, but Ryan, the, the England Sevens coach, I read his book. Then I spent the week down with the Englands, you know, was was fortunate enough to spend the week down in England with the England squad, the Sevens squad. Yeah. So obviously took a big interest in Sevens and then um, watched the Premiership Sevens on, on BBC and, you know, it, Kidd had scored an Attrick and then he scored another couple in the next game and it, it just came up as an invite player, so... What does that mean? That's, he basically got invited to play for Saracens. Wow. Um, but he was in the British Army and they had another Fijian who was coaching in the British Army. Um, so I YouTube, I couldn't, I had to pause it and write his name down because I couldn't spell his name. <laughs> so I YouTubed it and then obviously he bounced up on YouTube scoring a lot of tries for the Army Sevens. Yep. And then I rung our CEO and just said, look, it's a real left fielder, but he's in the British Army. I presume you've got to have a British passport to be in the British Army. Um, and then he looked into it, managed to get in touch with his regiment and then Asked him to come on trial, um, so he was based up in Catterick and did pre-season with us, um, yeah. and the rest is history. Mate, well, up the your pre-season goes well, and you can actually get an holiday and relax before you get back into it. Are we getting in early, back in early, the boys? Fourth, yeah, fourth of November. Fourth of November. Um, a couple of them are ticking over as well, so um, it's ironic, really. Albert Kelly's just started doing extras. <laughs> in the off season, I've never seen it like him. Like, wow. he, he didn't do them all year, and then he's doing extras in the off season. So that says a lot, though, doesn't it? Really? Yeah, be. your timing's all wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I you sign the desk, please, mate. And a big thank you to yourself, Lee, for coming and joining us. We'll see you next week for more rugby. Good night and God bless.